Showtime. Excellent. So welcome everyone to our session on engaged scholarship, racial equity, social justice, and the arts. Uh, Amy and I are really excited and grateful that you have elected to join us for this session. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Tom Hogan, and I serve in several roles at Penn State that are relevant to our conversation today. Uh, one, I'm a professor of practice in human resource management at the School of Labor and Employment Relations, College of the Liberal Arts. I am also the inaugural scholar in residence at the Center for the Performing Arts, College of Arts and Architecture here at Penn State. And for my school, I serve as the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging officer. So those are several roles that I currently serve in. The journey we're gonna be talking about today is a collaborative initiative. Uh, a key collaborative partner is Teaching and Learning with Technology in Penn State, who has taken my vision that we're going to be sharing with you and brought it to life. And so I'm joined today by my partner, Amy Kuntz. Amy, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, so just a quick caveat, we will be sharing all the slides today. Uh, we'll have a, a shareable link, but also if you are in the Discord, we'll be posting it there. So my name is Amy Kunz. I'm an instructional designer as part of Penn State's Teaching and Learning with Technology. Penn State is one university geographically dispersed with about 24 campuses. Uh, our, our University Park campus is in kind of the dead center of of Penn State or, or of Pennsylvania. And just to give you some context, driving from the eastern side of the state to the western side of the state is about five hours. So we really help steward uh, all initiatives and, and trying to push the envelope. And this project is part of a program that we have called Faculty Fellows, where every other year we uh, support six to eight really innovative topics where we build a team around a faculty member uh, and really help their idea that's on the cutting edge come to fruition. So it was very fortunate for uh, working with Tom these past two years and, and seeing where this, taking what he previously did, expanding upon it and seeing where it's gonna go and the project in the future. So with that, I'll pass things back to Dr. Tom Hogan to give a little bit more context. Hey, Amy, thank you. So. I've always been very passionate about performing and the arts. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to combine this passion for the arts with my roles as a scholar practitioner and the inaugural scholar in residence at the Center for the Performing Arts at Penn State. This is a picture of the cast of the production of What Problem, which is about belonging by the Bill T. Jones Arnie Zane Dance Company performed at Eisenhower Auditorium on campus here, University Park at Penn State. And this was February 11th, 2022. So just very recently. Um, this was an incredible experience for my spouse and I, as we were members of the community cast. If you see the gentleman sitting in the chair with the glasses, this is Bill T. Jones. He's a co-founder of this company. And the gentleman behind him with his hands on Bill's shoulder is me. To the right is my spouse. So this is the cast. And I wanted to share this with you because not only do am I involved with research and discovery regarding what you're gonna be hearing about today, but I'm a practitioner. And this is the latest example of where I have a chance to be engaged in the arts because the arts is a beautiful thing. It's about, there's nothing better in terms of a vehicle to teach compassion and empathy for others, to put yourself in someone else's shoes than the arts. So I wanted to share this with you. All right, so what are our learning objectives for this session today? There are several. One, we wanna share with you our experience, lessons learned, and in effect, our journey. Everything associated with creating our version of what we're calling a classroom of the future. This we call the Virtual Transformational Leadership Development Experience, or the VTLD experience for short. Two, we want to stimulate your thinking regarding reimagining the role of higher education and the role of faculty members in the classroom and the potential contribution of integrating the arts into gen ed 
interdisciplinary courses. Also, we wanna engage you in the discussion. So we welcome your thoughts, your reactions, reflections, and questions. And we're going to be pausing periodically during this session and encourage you and inviting you in to share. So as a scholar practitioner, I seek to connect research and discovery with practice and delivery. I was selected, as Amy mentioned, teaching and learning with technology faculty fellow for academic year 2020-2021. The VTLD experience is my faculty fellow project, and it's based on a two-year engaged scholarship research study conducted by students, which is titled Creating Transformative Experiences, the Art of Student Engagement and Engaged Scholarship. More on that in a little bit. Also, our session today is informed by my experience serving on the Society for Human Resource Management Blue Ribbon Commission on Racial Equity and serving as a member of the US delegation to the International Organization for Standardization Workgroup 8, which was responsible for creating and publishing a voluntary standard for diversity and inclusion for organizations. The lens that I choose to teach and conduct my research is a lens that we call ESG, environmental, social, and governance. And I choose to look at environment and social through a governance lens. Now, these are some of the key takeaways we want to highlight for you. In short, the VTLD experience leverages the arts in a virtual setting to promote student engagement and engage scholarship and to develop the next generation of leaders to serve as agents of change in pursuit of a more civil, equitable, and just society. Now, we, rec we were recognized recently by EdTech Digest in 2022, um, their 2022 awards program as a finalist in the higher education technology leader category. And we're really proud of that. Now, so those were the key takeaways. Yes, okay, thank you, Amy. So this slide captures my teaching philosophy. Embedded in the teaching philosophy is a model of belonging. You may have seen this around. So this is not something I've created. This has been around, but it captures what I'm all about and the basis of the VTLD experience. Diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice, equity is an action, and belonging is an outcome. Let me just repeat that for you in case you hadn't heard that. Model of belonging, diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice, equity is an action, and belonging is an outcome. So regarding the evolving role of faculty members in a classroom of the future, a colleague of mine put it best when he says, we need to move away from faculty being the sage on the stage to the guide on the side, and then recently added, and the meddler in between. And that is how I view my role. Uh, a report recently published by the Chronicle of Higher Ed titled The Future of Gen Z, How COVID-19 Will Shape Students and Higher Education for the Next Decade. It discusses what college, colleges need to do to emphasize, to meet the socially conscious expectation of Gen Zers, Zoomers, okay? Um, respondents indicated that the following factors were moderately or very important to Gen Zers when deciding which college to attend. Here they are, well-being, inclusion, ethics, safety, social justice, diversity, and environmental responsibility. It's, it's reports like this that give us insights and that we have used to create the VTLD experience. Okay, next slide, thank you, Amy. Our research sought to discover how the arts can be leveraged to inspire students to become psychologically involved, connected to, and passionate about learning. As well as, to motivate them, uh, as well as to motivate them to develop emotional intelligence, or what is called EQ, as well as cultural intelligence, or CQ. The study of the VTLD experience aligns with the thematic priorities highlighted in the Penn State's strategic plan. And this is really key 
Um, people ask me, how did you get support? I aligned what we did with what Penn State in the strategic plan said is important. And one of the things, thematic priorities that we talk about is advancing the arts and humanities and using them as agents of social change. That's exactly what we're doing with the VTLD experience. I served as principal investigator for the study and four separate teams of undergraduate students conducted the research over two academic years. 2019 through 2021. Students served as undergraduate research assistants and the research teams were comprised of students from our University Park campus, the Commonwealth campuses and Penn State's World Campus. Students earned three credits for enrolling in and completing this special topics course that I led. Students conducted a literature review, conducted video interviews with students, faculty, and staff at Penn State, as well as our collaborative research partners, which included the University of Nebraska, the University of Texas at Austin, the University of Pennsylvania, and the University of Kansas. Next slide, Amy, please. And that's over to you. Great. Uh, so the rest of today is going to be taking the research findings that the students did and having their high impact practice practices for undergraduate students. This was broad. This is not online. It was in person, online hybrid. I, I know that there was another session about high impact practices for online learning uh, as part of this conference. And so I just wanted to delineate those two things. So if you're in, uh, curious about the research, if you go to the VTLD website, uh, which is there, it is located towards the bottom of the page uh, as far as some of those research and, and deeper dives of the papers. So we're going to be talking more about the practicality of it all and talking about the high impact practices. And so we'll, uh, for this first one, give you our implementation of the high impact practices, and then we'll ask you to contribute. Have you ever done anything in the space? And it's okay if you didn't, because some of these are really uh, interesting and, and innovative and cutting edge or, or related to the arts. Uh, and so the first one that we're talking about is high impact practice findings one and two. So uh, those have found that leveraging the arts has been proven to promote student engagement and foster a greater sense of belonging. Witnessing the arts and interacting with performers makes students become more involved and interested in the content. And this could be the arts that has nothing to do with the subject matter of the course. Uh, so we've even used the arts and mathematics courses uh, and others with this kind of broad set in mind. And so when we were creating the course for the next generation of learners uh, and a labor, this labor relations course, we really wanted to tie it to the business and human resource practices, but also incorporate the arts and, and have that leverage and having those connections to be a more holistic person. So the first thing that we did is we actually had the ability to attend uh, live performances. One of the benefits uh, of COVID is the ability to have a lot of live performances via Zoom. Uh, this is uh, Step Africa, and, and so they were able to perform virtually. They had some discussion afterwards, and it really said, how, how do the arts uh, make you feel? How does it connect to the content that we're doing? What new insights do you have, et cetera? And so we really focused on that uh, reflection piece. So we wanted to have them experience cultures and different races and different genders that they might not have uh, had accustomed to. Uh, Pennsylvania is very rural <laughs> if you go outside of certain cities, and so they might not have had those experiences before. So that's just one of them. The other, and again, all of these links will be in the resource guide and discussion guide that we'll go to next, uh, is having poetry. So something uh, like slamming poetry to talk about racism and how to make those connections. So this video, it says sneezing is like racism. And we're just gonna play a brief little clip just to show you. To the side to sneeze like a decent human being and she just happened to speed walk into it. I think we don't have a great way to explain a sneeze because everyone has already experienced it by the time we know the word for it. How do you explain racism to someone who hasn't experienced it? Well, it's like when someone looks at you and presumes to know your story without ever once saying a word to you 
or listening to you or looking at you. It's like when someone gets an itch in the back of their mind that the skin you're wearing is so 2014 or 1968 or 1861 is worth a retweet, but not equality, is still upset about that whole slavery thing. And the only way to alleviate the itch is to call you boy or thug or target or to pretend your struggle to survive doesn't exist. And so to help those who haven't experienced it, understand just how common this still is. For the duration of this poem, I will replace the word racism with the word sneeze. I was 15 when I experienced sneezing for the first time. I was meeting my girlfriend's parents and her father looked me in my eyes and said, I don't want you dating my daughter. He tried to blame it on other people sneezing, that he was just looking out for our safety, but that's the thing about sneezing. Once you see it, you can always tell when someone's trying hard to hold it in. I used to believe that sneezing and so you can see that that's very powerful. I know even for me watching it again, it's it's just it, it tugs at your heartstrings so much more. And so many of the videos that we have as part of the experience, there's times that uh, our colleague Sarah, who wasn't able to make it today and myself, we just cry and we're like, ah, again, <laughs> even we, though we watched it five or six times, making sure it was closed caption for the students, uh, for sure. And so um, you could, I always equate it to, you could talk about something, you could show pictures of it, you could explain it, it could be in words, but the sense of the arts uh, really empowers and has deeper connection in those the deeper feelings. Uh, and so whenever we talk about these arts experiences, uh, what we do uh, is have the reflection piece. We we make sure that they think about it and and how did they how did they make connections? What did they feel? What did they they what were, were those items? And we'll come back to this in a little bit. The other part that we have done uh, for the arts, uh, we'll talk about in a, a second, but I, I really like this quote, and, and thankfully Dr. Tom Hogan uh, brought it to us and says, the arts enable us to put ourselves in the minds, eyes, and hearts of other human beings. And so that's where uh, really these, these first two high impact practices uh, come forth. So our other one, this transcends two of our high impact practices. One is the arts right now. The other is using more cutting edge technology as to give you a preview. And so we used a tool called Art Steps. We could have just had photos in our learning management system and say, hey, look at this. Uh, but we decided to have this and hopefully it will work. Let me go back. Um, this uh, virtual um, art museum called Art Steps. And so this is the picture and you could click on it and learn a, a bit more uh, because of we have a vigorous process for any free tool uh, to be used at Penn State. And so uh, we were able to use it at pass all of the accessibility, student information, et cetera. Um, but we had to ensure that we had public domain images posted or ones that we owned. Uh, so uh, your institution might be different. You might be able to have different uh, licensing images, but but if you see a common theme of, of public domain, that's why. So we were able to give some context. Uh, this is the art gallery and each um, hallway is a lesson. So this first one uh, is week one. Um, the corridor behind here is week two, over here is week three, and we have them navigate towards the back, <laughs> uh, towards the end. So they can do this in a web browser. Uh, they also can do it in a headset. We were going to have this be a hybrid course, um, but then we switched it to a 100% online course. We did not explore that further, um, but that is the plan for the summer is to have directions of students so choose uh, for that part. And so uh, for here, they could navigate, they could see that this is really much an art gallery and some of students might actually divulge that they've never been to an art gallery before. And so that was really empowerful too. Uh, so for them to navigate, they also have these guide points so you can quickly navigate to say, hey, I'm on lesson 10, how do I get there? Um, but I really like this kind of navigation uh, as you so desire. So if we jump to lesson 12, it will take us <laughs> on a journey uh, and we could uh, go around and all the way over here. Uh, so this is lesson 12 and you could get more information. Uh, so what afford, can you talk about building something in art steps? What affordances will get, will get from the platform? So this um, really was taking something static 
um, and empowering the ability to push the arts um, as far as visiting art gallery, giving students experiences they, they did not have otherwise. And so that was uh, our part. I'm happy to stay after or touch base on Discord as far as the process. It was pretty seamless. Um, some This has been adopted by other uh, individuals at Penn State. We actually have a faculty member at the Brandywine campus near Philadelphia who creates quilts about biology and for um, her sabbatical, she was doing that and, and wanted to have a place for this. And so there is now an art gallery of all her, of her quilting work. She used to just have a, a blog website and it was very static. Uh, so she was able to do that and, and has found it to be very fruitful. And she's doing some research to see if, if visitors like that 2D and also the art museum aspect, and it's been overwhelming the, the artistic one. Great question. Thanks for that. So now it's going to be uh, your turn. So we are going to have this collaborative document. This includes the slides and, and this link. Um, it includes a whole bunch of items um, that we're, we're sharing, but we want to hear from you. Have you done anything in the arts, uh, especially in a discipline that is not arts based? Uh, so we will be posting this in the chat uh, in one second. So if you go to that collaborative document, you could go ahead and type in here. Um, I know that we had some extra people and, and typing over each other <laughs> for our other session. So I'll, I'll put some extra bullet points. And if you're not comfortable with putting in this in the collaborative document, if you go ahead and, and type in Zoom chat, uh, I'm happy to uh, put the notes over here uh, in the document for you later on today. I really like that the Global Awareness course and presenting artwork that re represented themselves and their work. Awesome. And the reason uh, this could be the hardest one, <laughs> we did these in order of the undergraduate research study that the students had found. Uh, and so I thought that we wanted to be really true to their essence. And a lot of the art images that were uh, included in the art steps document uh, were found by one of the student researchers. We had to switch out a few of those because of that public domain versus Creative Commons share alike licensing, uh, but that, that I thought was really important. And Amy, if I may just add a commentary, one of the reasons why I think the arts are so powerful and so useful is that I'm interested in creating a beginner's mindset for learners. That is, I want them to be curious. Curiosity leads to discovery. And in addition to that, one of my favorite expressions is that certainty is the death of curiosity and curiosity is a prerequisite for learning. So that's how the, the arts can help students transform. Um, have a shift in how they think about themselves, others, their situation, and the world. Great. Immersive theater and escape game. I thank you so much, and thanks so much for putting the link. That goes back to a, a different item for virtual reality we had. You could talk about Anne Frank, you could explain her, her, the living conditions, but there is an Anne, Van, Anne Frank um, ex, virtual reality experience where you actually go and navigate her, her house. Um, and so that's a precursor to <laughs> of what we'll be sharing in a little bit. Wonderful. Thanks so much for all your contributions. And again, this is a living document. So I know we have the Discord, but to help, I know there's lots of links being, 
being posted. So to contextualize it within the concept of this overarching one, if you're willing to share in, in the Google Doc, it's greatly appreciated. Wonderful. So our next high impact practice uh, is that, uh, and again, we'll we'll go first and, and then have you all, but I, I want you to think about these while we're sharing these examples, uh, is there is a need for innovative thinking and unique tools, i.e. technologies such as VR, virtual reality, AR, augmented reality, and AI, uh, artificial intelligence to accomplish positive positive engagement outcomes. When Dr. Tom Hogan first approached us with his idea, it was really to uh, have this holistic part, but one part of the project was to have an AI chatbot, which we would be able to train and to hopefully um, have as a one-on-one -on -one coach about becoming a transformational leader. That is something that we said we don't have it yet, but we could create the course to fun, uh, funnel the information that could help train that AI agent. And so that's one thing that we're going to explore and kind of hand off and, and uh, where this project goes into the future and to other iterations as well. So we did incorporate uh, the VR 360 video piece and a little bit of the, the AI. And so we do want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the first to be completely transparent, uh, three out of the four tools that we currently have um, are paid. Uh, and so we did have some funding that, that Tom had previously uh, to pay for these four students. So one was the Kazai group has a self-assessment uh, on transformational leadership and inclusivity within the business sector and human resources. So we had it as a self-assessment before the start of the semester and it, towards the end. Uh, and so uh, we are going to be replacing that with another tool we'll explore in a little bit. We also had eMindful, which helps students think about their health and mental mental health and, and awareness and interacting with that. It gave them some insights of where to go and gave them based upon their results, some additional items or things to explore. Same thing with Culture Pop. This is an app that uh, is focused on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging more in the workforce. And so that too, based upon students' answers and questions, fed them unique material. And so some of the assignments that we had were, what did you experience and what did you learn about it? Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll take a, a, a bit look of that right now. And so um, this is the Canvas course that we have. Uh, we have it set up in a variety of ca capacities. I'm going to quickly show you lesson two right now. Uh, and so we have an introduction and some context. Uh, from there, we talk about the objectives and activities. We decided to have a tangible printable guide for students to take notes through all of their experiences that they did. Uh, and then from here, we had, oops, it zoomed in a little bit, uh, is imagery, a lesson commentary, and coaching and how to be a transformational leader and, and some videos. We have Kaltura, so we are able to embed quiz questions as well as track student use. Uh, so that was beneficial. Then we had them go through the arts experience and it um, included the art gallery. From there, they could choose uh, which arts experience of videos they wanted to have in addition to the live ones that we had sprinkled throughout the semester. Uh, and then uh, from here, this is where they would experience culture pop and uh, eMindful. And so we gave some contextualization, we guided them, but they also had exploratory time and we said how much time that they should do. From there, they had a discussion that always linked to our learning objectives. Uh, and um, from there, that's where they had this reflection piece. Uh, and so because of it being so open ended, especially the arts and their holistic journey with these apps, we decided to use um, a process from uh, Harvard's education sector, which is see, think, wonder, and that is in the notes. And so 
we said, what did you see in the three images and the videos that you selected? What stands out? So it's a very contextualized. What did you watch? But but having them visually talk about it. So what did you think is going on? Their perception of what's happening and saying, what makes you say that? And lastly, what what does this make you wonder about and think about and what broader questions? And so that reflective part was uh, very helpful. So when we think about um, the innovation piece really quickly, uh, one is the use of 360 videos. So again, students had the choice of watching it two dimensionally, but also in uh, VR headsets. And, and so I'll play a quick little snippet of, of uh, one of these right now. I remember being about seven, maybe 10 years old in Hex Department store when a little girl called me a nigger and spat on me. And I couldn't, I couldn't. Oops. Sorry about that. I couldn't retaliate. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. I was so angry inside, but I couldn't do anything about it because I knew that it would be blamed on me. The Green Book was a guide for African Americans to travel safely, to find shelter, food, and gas in a time where these basic rights were not guaranteed. So I'm muting the the audio, but just to give you some context with the 360 video. So um, and on a laptop or a computer screen, you could kind of pan around and you embody the person. Uh, a narrator right now, uh, but also if you're in the VR headset, you could look around. And so having that be impacted and, and talking about it uh, really helped. And so we had various videos, um, this one about traveling while Black during Jim Crow, but we also had another one about how three African-American businesses survived decades of turmoil, and all of those are in the document. Some other ones that we are uh, going to quickly mention is if you want to see if there's anything with 360 video augmented reality or virtual reality, we actually have an experience catalog we worked with the librarians uh, to capture some applications and have it be by discipline. So really quickly, uh, just to show you the 360 video piece, you could use search terms, you could browse all of them. But if you are uh, in business and you want to click on business and filter some of these, this allows you to explore a mega ship uh, and uh, lots, lots more. And the other piece that I want to talk about uh, is the replacement of eMindful. And so we are going to be using a tool that still has that AI aspect. Uh, and one of those that's a competitor uh, is Wobot. And I just wanted to quickly show what Wobot is and how it works as that AI agent. Need to get something off your chest? Meet Wobot, the friendly little bot who's ready to listen 24 seven. Wobot's been trained in cognitive behavior therapy and an approach to mental health that is all about identifying distortions in your thinking. Wobot doesn't do therapy, but he can be your guide to help you figure out things on your own. Oh, and he's effective. Some nice people at Stanford University demonstrated that chatting to Wobot for two weeks led to significant improvement in mood. Every day he asks how your day is going, how you're feeling, and what you're up to. He builds an emotional model of you over time and can help you see patterns in your mood. As he learns about you, he'll teach you things, like useful strategies and practical tools that have been shown to work. You're not troubling him at all. Honestly, he has nothing else to do. So, so I'll keep it brief at that. Um, but if you want to explore more, again, those will all be in the guide. So we gave you a lot of different examples of kind of those cutting edge strategies. Uh, and so we wanted to turn it back to you. Uh, what types of tools have you used? Uh, and have you done some cutting edge items in this area? And so just like before, I'm going to be posting the discussion uh, questions and collaborative notes document, and then I'll go over to that in one minute, um, just in case people I know are coming uh, in a little bit later on. And so now we're gonna go down here to high impact practice number three. Uh, and so just like before, I'll have some 
places. So in case you pick a number, <laughs> uh, in case, so that way we're not typing on, on top of one another. Amy, while folks are typing, um, the idea here all along was to have a multi-phase approach to the BTLD experience. Phase one was to pilot it, check mark, done. Phase two was to create a gen ed interdomain cross-listed course between the College of Liberal Arts and the College of Arts and Architecture, check mark, done. Um, we were going to be launching that version spring 2023. Now, Amy has mentioned this, this course, I provide students with, it's a web-based course, so it's asynchronous, but there's a synchronous component. And that is I provide one-on-one -on -one individual um, transformative leadership development coaching. As we scale this up as a gen ed class, we could have 200 or more students from University Park, Commonwealth campuses, as well as World Campus, involved in this course. So the idea was for phase three to use artificial intelligence, machine learning, to empower a virtual coaching agent that in effect would replace me. So that's how all this fixed, fits together. Um, and I just wanted to share that context because context is important. Great, thanks so much. A Mozilla hub so to create. Um, spaces for students to work. Great. And I know there's a lot of um, different VR exploratory <laughs> sessions today. A Gather Town is another one. Um, and so we used a different tool, which was not VR, called Spatial Chat, and it's free for 25 students to kind of move around. Uh, we're planning on using Mozilla Hubs uh, a little bit more this summer. We've only done it kind of optional in classes, but it's actually going to be required. Great. Oh, perfect. Embedded them, uh, spatial chat and hubs for DTL. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Creating neural networks for architecture students. Wonderful. Great, thanks so much for your contributions, everyone, and, and still please continue on uh, moving forward. So with that, I'm going to pass things over to Tom uh, to talk a little bit about high impact practice findings number four. And again, we'll uh, give you the discussion question now, but just remember, we'll give some context first and then allow you to go back in and the document. So uh, take it away, Tom. Thank you, Amy. So folks on this slide, um, you can see the discussion question here, but the context is this. In the future, scholars are saying that the value of artificial intelligence and machine learning and other technologies is to provide the tools to customize and personalize learning for students. And so um, this is about how do you create a welcoming and inclusive teaching and learning environment for everyone, in particular, students who are underrepresented and marginalized. How do you create that kind of environment? So question is, how do you do this? And as Amy has mentioned, and we've talked about, we were fortunate enough to receive funding in our grant where we were able to experiment with some of this. And now we're swapping out some of the technology because going forward, um, we can't pass those costs on to students. So here's the discussion question. How do you address unique needs of learners when developing a learning experience? We would love for you to go to chat and uh, share with us. or use the uh, Google Doc. Either way, but we'd like to hear from you folks.
Yeah, let me just chat about this removing barriers. Um, I do a lot of work as I shared with you in the diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging space. And this is what I am, where I am in my journey on this continuum is that if we focus on creating an inclusive teaching and learning environment where everyone is welcomed and has a sense of belonging, if that is our overall approach, then what will surface will be what are the barriers preventing that from occurring? I think we can apply this concept to teaching as well. Competency-based learning, yes, excellent. Here's what's interesting. LinkedIn published a study where employers, back to the value of the arts here and combine that with technology, employers said the number one quality that they're looking for in new hires is creativity. The ability to think creatively, to creative problem solve, to work with other people. Very, very interesting concept. Yes, uh, asynchronous activities, welcoming all students. And sometimes um, it's very interesting. I have a book over here that I'm reading, how to, what do, inclusive faculty members do. So there's a lot of, I think, Amy, did you suggest that to me? Someone suggested that to me. I went out and bought it. It's part of my summer reading list. Um, so there are a lot of documents, et cetera, that are available in this space. One of the things we haven't touched on as other folks are populating the Google Doc is the concept of uh, algorithmic bias. So I'm all in. Uh, relative to using artificial intelligence and machine learning. There's the potential and the peril. So we need to be sensitive to how this can be misused uh, technology. And in fact, the, uh, I'm involved with the World Economic Forum where we are looking at how a human-centered AI. So I just bring that to your attention. The World Economic Forum is doing a lot of work in this space, if we're going to leverage technology, then we need to be sensitive to how technology can actually be biased and do more harm than good. Thank you so much everyone for populating the Google Doc. Okay, so that's my cue, Amy. So um, on this slide, interesting, as we gather today, um, I'm mindful of the grand challenges that we are facing as a people, as a nation, as a global community. For instance, we're still battling COVID-19 pandemic. It's already claimed the lives of about a million people in the US and over 6 million people worldwide. According to the UN Intergovernmental Panel on climate change, scientists are observing changes in the Earth's climate in every region and across the whole climate system. Many of the changes observed in the climate are unprecedented, and some of the changes already set in motion, such as continued sea level rise, are irreversible. We live in a time that's highly polarized, highly partisan, and frequently, my observation, facts are optional and racial equity and social justice for all continues to be an aspiration for many. This is the context that next gen leaders, Gen Zers, Zoomers must learn how to navigate. And that as an educator, my personal mission is to help equip students to be prepared to address these kind of grand challenges. I think you're up now, Amy. Yes, I am. And so I do want to address actually one of the questions that is in the form, uh, the Google form or document. <laughs> uh, and uh, as far as 
beginning of the semester activities and pre-learning surveys. The one uh, of that uh, book of what do inclusive instructors do, they have a great example that's research based of the who's in class form. So if you go kind of two bullet points up in the document from where you're typing, uh, it, there's a link to an article that has questions from the form. It also has research. So that way it's uh, kind of research fact, uh, kind of anecdotally, uh, I have some other things that I'll touch base on after today's session, but I think those two um, would be really great to, to take a look at for sure. And so one thing that we did uh, is to make sure that we had representation and imagery and diverse perspectives in our courses. So a lot of the, the textbook and other readings came from a wide wealth. We had, again, we had a business spin. So we made sure that items came from big companies, small companies, rural companies, city companies uh, around the world. Uh, and, and to have those diverse perspectives from the author, the author point, we also had that that option of choice, uh, particularly for the videos and some of the readings, not all of them, because we wanted to also in, balance it and sort of the concept of alignment that for every objective we had it covered and the required readings and videos and the required activities and assessments. Um, but we also had some of that fluidity and broader um, items as well. And then also we made sure that the images that we use in the course, not just had a, a transgendered individual, but it was a transgendered person that was in a powerful leadership role as depicted here. And so if you say one of the, the hardest things I think is trying to find all of these in the landscape. And so in our document, uh, there is a whole list of different image repositories uh, from from all of those areas. And so we use a lot of the images in the course from all these various repositories. So knowing that we are having about five minutes left. Uh, I'm going to pass things back over to Tom to talk about our learning space and uh, give some context of what happened and have one last question for you all. So take it away, Tom. Okay, I had a problem unmuting myself. So creating active learning opportunities is fundamental to the VTLD experience. Active learning refers to the various ways in which learners engage in the learning process that do not involve passively listening. We seek to promote deep thinking by encouraging self-reflection, self-awareness, self-knowledge. Students have a, a journal, online journals that they journal in during the course. Um, these are some of the teaching methods that we employ to encourage deep thinking. Next slide, Amy, please. Now let's pivot quickly and talk about what are transformative learning experiences and how do we create them for next gen leaders. Transformative learning experience can be viewed as opportunities for students to realize a shift in how they see themselves, their situation, others in the world. Our research in the VTLD experience is intentional and purposeful about creating cognitive dissidence for learners while simultaneously providing them with tools, resources, and support, such as mindfulness meditation, to help them reconcile this cognitive dissonance. We seek to create aha moments. I never knew. I am shocked, shocked, shocked. This is the first time I've ever been exposed. These are all examples that have come out of the VTLD experience from students. Next slide, please, Amy. Okay, so I'm gonna jump to that. So in conclusion, we're committed to a vision involving helping to develop next-gen leaders to be agents of social justice, equity, and belonging. We are interested in reimagining higher education and creating a classroom of the future. We want to personalize and customize the learning experience. And we wanna do it at scale by using technology. We wanna rethink the role of faculty in the classroom, as I mentioned before, evolving from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. And we want to leverage artificial intelligence, machine learning, immersive technologies, et cetera, to help realize our vision. Next slide, please. Amy. 
Yeah, so uh, that was a total accident by me. <laughs> uh, so one thing that we're going to have you do is think about uh, as post session, in addition to the survey, is what questions you have to challenge your faculty. And one thing that we incorporated in the course, in addition to that see, think, wonder, is Harvard has a different self-assessment on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. It's uh, anonymous and then when you take it a few days later i think they only do it once a week you you get your results and and you can align it with some playlists so that's another resource that we have um so i think in the essence of time <laughs> uh, we'll we'll skip your thoughts of putting the discussion but please put it in the notes okay and on this slide here's what we uh and amy has already made this offer to learn more about the vtld experience this is our research study uh, landing page, you'll see research study report, video interviews that students conducted, an article we had published in the International Journal of Business and Management Studies, and short video recordings by students sharing their stories and experience relative to the VTLD experience. Next page, Amy. And this is um, the last uh, slide in the deck. Um, Amy and I would welcome the opportunity to connect with you. Here are our email uh, addresses. Um, we're happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. And thank you so much for attending our session. We really appreciate it. Oh, what a wonderful session. Thank you. With, you gave us so many actionable things. I just love it. So we'll see if anybody has any extra questions, but I'll stop that recording at this time. <laughs>